Lord have mercy. Does it look like cousin it or what? Lord. Need to do a little fixing here. That's a little bit better. Ah! Oh, so how is everybody doing today? Um, remember we're working with an old computer and I have poor lighting and my computer is being held together by a binder clip if you don't already know that. And I'm just surprised because this is a solid black t-shirt and on my camera it is purely purple. Go figure. But anyways, um, welcome to the D. Louise book series. It's nice to meet you. I'm Christina K.R.S. T.A.N.A. This is where we read books and talk about books. No special effects going on here. Um, so I would like for you to please check out uh, my Star Trek Next Generation recap on Friday. My If Then episodes on Friday. I don't know what happened. Um, I did uh, Black Authors If Then. I did 30 of them. Science Fiction, Vampire, Contemporary Romance. And nobody's watched it. YouTube has showed it to nobody. And I've done a couple of really good other videos. And um, no, they, people haven't watched those either. Flashback Monday, I got carried away and did over 70 books. Usually five or six books from mystery, from romance, from uh, sci-fi, from inspirational. Let me just... Sorry, no special here. My, um, so I do, you know, like uh, historicals. Come here, come here. As long as you're being a past, come here. Um, historicals and romances and uh, harlequins and inspirationals, contemporary and suspense and sci-fi and erotica, and no one watches those either. But I'm glad you're here for my daily book reviews. And as you know, we are doing Victoria Thompson's Gaslight Mystery Series and um, J.O. Ward's Black Dagger Brotherhoods. And we are doing Alex, I keep saying it, James Patterson's Alex Cross Murder Series. And this is book 11 in the series. And I will have to, um, oh, I got itch, tell you and be prepared for spoilers. Lots and lots and lots of spoilers. Um, I need to go get my Power of Vito necklace that my husband made me out of scrap metal. It's a little metal chain, and uh, he took two pieces of scrap metal and glued it together and then put a bar across it because that's the Power of Vito. Uh, Canada's veto is a big, huge V. It's a big as your hand V. And we need to do something about get Canada back on the road here. Uh, but anyways, let's get back to Alex Cross. Alex Cross is currently working for the FBI. And he is jet-setting all over the place. All over the place. Yeah, D.C. and California and Seattle because Christine uh, has taken... Uh, little Alex away from him. As you may or may not know, Alex started off as a cop for DC and he had some issues there, but he was also becoming very useful um, FBI person and he finally had enough of DC and decided to go work with FBI. But in some parts of the FBI, they were cheating him up here. Some parts of the FBI, they were cheating him down here. And he was getting the signals. He's flying all over the place. He's staying at hotels. He's going back and forth. He's got the girlfriend in California who may may, may or may not be seeing other people behind his back. Um, we've got another two. He Alex sleeps around in this book. This is one book where he really sleeps around in. Um, he hasn't done this much in a while. But he is sleeping around in this one a few times. But um, it, it's just... And I, I was a little... There is some, my question is, uh, in the beginning, you're, you are introduced to two killers. And the question is, is it really two killers or is it a split personality? And the, the 
if they seem to have two different mindsets, but you're not exactly sure what's going on there. And so it's just the um, the book is a really, really fast read. Some of the chapters are like a page long. That's the one thing that I do like about Patterson's books is that each character gets their own chapter so that when the POV changes, the chapter changes. There are lots of authors that will do several POVs in one chapter. So you have to know the characters really well and get their voices in your head to watch when the change happens. But it, Patterson has always done each character, each point of view, POV, is in each character's POV. So we get one page, one chapter, which could be up to two paragraphs long, and that's it. That's it, the two paragraphs, and n next chapter is a whole nother person, whole nother POV. Yes, ma'am, what is with you today? So, um... We've got, and we've got Mary Mary, and we don't see too much of John Sampson in this. We do have a couple of family catch-ups. It's like case, 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 fly home, family catch-up, case, 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 uh, fly home, family catch-up. I'll fly to Seattle to see Alex, do this, do this, do this, do this, back to California again, back to, uh, and he's just, Alex is just running all over with his head cut off. Or should I rephrase it? Flying all over with his head cut off. And um, at one point in the book, a big, huge spoiler uh, is uh, Alex tells John Sampson that the FBI would like him to join. Alex makes a, no, no, John Sampson makes a comment about how the FBI may wanting to uh, hire him just because he's black and they want to blacken up their FBI. And John Sampson, in rebuttal to Alex Cross's offer or suggestion, John Sampson says to Alex, why don't you come back to D.C.? So though no answer is given on either side. Nothing is said on either side. No one responds to either question. Uh, it's just left up in the air for you to ponder as the characters ponder. And um, it's just, uh, we have our two serial killers, a one serial killer, um, killing tons of people, tons of people, and then sending emails to these people saying, this is why you were killed. And they're giving the emails to a reporter so the reporter can talk about them or report on them in the newspaper or... Um, something like that, or be a source for the, the police. Um, not really sure what the killer's motives are in corresponding with the newspaper reporter, but um, the first kill, um, we, we don't know until much later on when Alex... Alex has a huge... You're, they, you, they think they've caught the killer, because... You get a lot of red herrings, and Patterson points the finger at all these different ideas and all these different suspects. But tell me, when you're reading a book, and it's 400 pages thereabouts, and the characters are convinced, convinced that they've arrested the real killer at page 200. Now you know. You've got 200 more pages of book to go. So, are you the reader, before you turn the page, before they turn the page, are you the reader going, oh, they really did catch the bad guy, or are you thinking or going, oh, there's got to be a twist. This isn't the real bad guy. It's just a red herring because there's 200 more pages to go. So, obviously, that was not the real killer. Because there was 200 more pages to go. Or maybe the person that was arrested was a patsy for the killer. So we don't know that stuff. You have to kind of read the book. I don't divulge who the killer was. But I do divulge all character related stuff in the book. Um, but so we have these two. Maybe two. 
maybe three, maybe two? Is it one person with a split personality or is it two individuals? Um, we have a Mary Smith who may or may not be a female. There is some argument out there on whether the killer is male or female. There's a lot of speculation by different law enforcement officers who prefer to think of a silly serial killer as a male. And uh, Alex likes to consider, and he is living under the possibility that the serial killer is a female. So there's two juxtapositions there about whether or not, um, you know, who the serial killer is and what their uh, sex is. But that's a state of contention between the characters throughout most of the book. Uh, we do get a couple of false leads, uh, false arrests, and then things take a twisty turn towards the end. And Alex has a huge, huge light bulb moment. And I don't, I've talked about this previously, but I have an author that says um, if the characters do something on the page that's considered on stage. But if the characters do something and say, oh, last week Mary went shopping, then that is something that happened off the page or off stage. And on this particular book, you think... Um, the serial killer is makes a consistent appearance throughout the entire book. Um, you don't... One of the serial... It isn't until later in the book till the end that you realize you got a guest appearance by the real killer early in the book. But you don't know that because it's such a brief appearance. A hi, how are you appearance that... It, you don't put the pieces together until the very, very end of the book when Alex has that light bulb moment, that explosion. Uh, so that's an issue. So the, the, you have one serial killer who's consistently on stage throughout the book and then another one who may or may, may be the third one because the, the killer is... In some chapters, the killer is Mary Smith, quote-unquote. Then in other chapters, the killer may or may not be the storyteller, quote-unquote. And then there may be a third. Or they could all be one person, and it could be a split personality. There's a lot of stuff going on in this book, and Alex is trying to do stuff, and he runs into bureaucratic BS and guys who think they know what they're doing and don't even want to listen to Alex and some of his suggestions. I hate when that happens. When Alex says, hey, you know, you need to do this and this and this. And they don't want to hear anything from Alex. They don't like Alex. And they're not going to listen to him at all. Um, Nana Mama is having some uh, issues health-wise. She's also been hanging out with Dr. Kayla uh, quite a bit. And um, it occurred to me the other day... And you will have to check out Flashback Monday for Black Authors. But it just hit me. Kayla Perrin is an author. And she's on the front page of Romantic Times Book Review that I use for the Black Authors. And she's in a later years. We haven't gotten there yet. So I will show that magazine again in if, when it comes up uh, year-wise. Because we are in 2010 right now. I, my magazine collection starts in 2007. And it goes through to 2016 when the magazine went uh, digital. And then they closed up permanently. And now we have Goodreads. But it was so much easier just to pick up a magazine. And, uh, you know, go through the stuff. You know, um, I had a lady in, in the, the library the other day. And so... When I read a hardcover, I take the cover off and then read it so that the hard so the jacket doesn't get damaged. And I had I had a lady the other day who bought a book and then gave me the jacket and I'm like, "You don't separate the book from the jacket. 
you're ruining the financial value of the book, the providence of the book. And I finally talked her into keeping it, but who knows? She may have went out the library and threw the uh, cover away. So we don't know. But that that's just a little side bit from that. Isn't that weird how that's showing up two different colors on my video? Um, but, so yeah, Alex spends so much time going from D.C. to L.A., back to D.C., to Seattle, to California. It, it's just, it's a little much. And the, the family does go on vacation. And I wanted to say, um, what's Chris... Alex takes the family to Disneyland, and they're supposed to have five days in Disneyland. And Alex, little Alex, is enjoying his time with his half siblings, and he's having a really good time in Disneyland. And Christine comes and takes the child away two days early, so her child is missing two days in Disneyland. What mother in her right mind, when her kid is safe? with the relatives in Disney takes her kid out of Disney two days short and or if she had concerns why did she just not get herself a room and have her and her uh, son move into a room of their own if she felt the kid was better under her own private supervision than Nana Mama's or Alex's supervision and then the kid could have enjoyed the extra two days in, in Disney. But no, she takes the kid home to Seattle. I felt bad for the kid that he did not get to experience the last two days in Disney with the rest of the family. And yeah, she did it because she was Alex and his job and he was going all over the place and she was having all these mental issues. So um, there was that going on. And then there was the stuff with Nana Mama having some ish health issues herself and Nana Mama brings up a really good point in that Alex is spending so much time jet setting all over the United States to solve all these cases he's not getting too much family time and his family is missing him so that's why I'm thinking I don't know for a fact yet because I haven't picked up the next book but I, I do believe that Alex will go back to DC at some point or I think might open his own practice. I'm not sure. I don't remember which happens. But I, I know at some point he opens his own practice for a few months or whatever, however that goes. But, um, so we'll see what happens in the next book. But, so, to find out if we have two serial killers or if it's one serial killer, uh, you'll have to read the book to find out who it is and how Alex finally discovers the truth himself. And we will both have to read the next book to find out what happens with Alex's career and what choice he decides to have. And also, uh, what woman he wants to spend some time with after this book. Because he does spend it with several different women. And also, it seems, it appears, that Jamila may be moving on with someone else locally. But we don't have confirmation of that yet. Um, and we have Nana's mama's health issues and spending time with Kayla. And at, towards the end of the book, Alex goes out on a date with Kayla. So we're going to have to see where that ends up. She is the doctor that was treating Nana mama. So I think that's it for today. Um, you'll have to check out the book to find out who the killers are and stuff like that. And also, they're... Um, in the midst of all this, Christine takes Alex to court for custody of Alex, and uh, she wins. But does she? You'll have to read the book to find out the weird changes at the end of the book. But if you could please hit the like and subscribe, I'd appreciate it. Um, if you could please check out Star Trek Next Gen on Fridays, my If Then episodes, especially my If Then uh, Black Authors and my If Then Vampires. Um, those two videos got very, very low, low views. I don't know why YouTube isn't showing them. Um, but all of my If Then, the Homicide one, the FBI one, the Vampires, the Werewolves, uh, I worked really hard on all of those. And all of my Flashback Mondays, I really get carried away. I enjoy that Romantic Times Book Review magazine so much. I just enjoy sharing it. I enjoy sharing the books with you. 
So um, if you could please hit the like and subscribe, I'd appreciate it. If you don't like, don't do anything. Uh, apparently, I've learned the hard way that when someone hits the thumbs down, it kills your anal kills your analytics by fifty percent. It really, really sucks. But anyways, have a good day. Most appreciative that you stopped by.